kill the Witcher! Silence, please. I'm trying to get some work done in here. Thank you. Jesus. Hey! Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my video for the Witcher Netflix movie announcement and what's going on with season two. So if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Witcher videos. I will be doing videos for the movie stuff when it comes because that'll be separate from the season two episodes. I'll just break all this down top 10 style. Careful for spoilers from The Witcher season one. I'll be talking about the events of season one as I start talking about what's going on during the movie that they just announced and what's going on during season two. So number 10 WTF, what's going on? What's this movie that they're talking about? So The Witcher Netflix movie is called Nightmare of the Wolf. The wolf that they're referring to in the title is obviously Geralt, AKA the White Wolf. The people that make The Witcher Netflix series are making a tie-in anime movie that's going to cross over with the events of the show and probably be released before season two gets here. Number nine WTF, the big announcement they made about the animation studio that Netflix partnered with is Studio Mir. They're the studio created by some of the people who worked on the original Avatar The Last Airbender series. In case you didn't know, Netflix is also doing a brand new Avatar The Last Airbender series next year, so see how that's all connected. Those people also went on to form their own animation studio and did Legend of Korra too, so that's probably where most of you know their work from in terms of animation style. So my early guess is that it'll look similar to some of the animation on Avatar Legend of Korra but be way more hardcore to make it feel more like something you would expect from a Witcher story. And because it's Netflix, it's not being made for children, they can be as graphic as they want. Hmm. Number eight, The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf official synopsis for the movie is the world of The Witcher expands in this anime film that explores a powerful new threat facing the continent. So that's pretty brief. It doesn't tell you a lot about what the plot is going to be, but when they speak of expanding the world of The Witcher with Geralt facing a powerful new threat, it sounds like they're adapting a story that's not completely told in the books. And it also sounds like a prequel story. Mostly, I think, in service of not spoiling the events of season two or future seasons, because I do think that season two is going to start right after the end of the finale where Geralt meets Ciri here. If you haven't read the Witcher books, which is what they're using to adapt the TV show episodes, Season of Storms is a good example. It's the most recent Witcher book that's been published, but it's a short story that takes place way earlier in the timeline between the events of The Last Wish after Geralt and Yennefer part ways like you see during the Witcher Netflix episode 6. Like, she bolts. She's like, that's it. I've had enough of you. But the Season of Storms adventures take place before Sword of Destiny where he and Ciri come together like we saw during the finale. There's a lot of time jumps in the Witcher Netflix series as there are in the books. So Season of Storms just tells the story of his adventures during those unexplained time jumps. The pacing is super brisk and there's way more action in it than there is in some of the main books themselves. So number seven, my top picks for the quote unquote new threat that they're actually covering during this Witcher anime movie is Season of Storms, the actual book itself. So quick synopsis of what that book is about. It treads a lot of well-worn tropes of typical Witcher stories. So you have kings and queens that are greedy and short-sighted. You have small towns that are corrupt and suspicious. Everyday folk that are prejudiced and violent. Worse than some of the monsters Geralt is hired to fight. And at the same time, Geralt conveniently meets enough helpful, intelligent, compassionate people along the way to challenge his cynicism. Like he does during the Witcher Netflix series. So like most of Geralt's adventures that are told in the books, there's this constant push-pull between his apathy for humanity and also his empathy because of the good people he runs into. The biggest complaint that people have about it, though, are that the stakes aren't quite as big as you would expect because the story takes place really early in Geralt's timeline, so you kind of already know what's going to be happening to him later. So even if he gets into trouble when he's fighting a wizard, you know he's eventually going to survive. You know Yennefer's going to be fine, Ciri's going to be fine, because they all show up in the next book. So number six, next pick is Geralt versus Sorrel Deggerland, which is actually one of the adventures during Season of Storms, one of the evil major antagonist wizards he goes up against. Geralt is hired by a wizard to investigate after there's a series of weird murders happening in and around this mage's tower. It's a castle called Rissenberg. They think one of their fellow mages, Sorrel, raised a demon, and the demon has been going around killing all these people. 
When Geralt finds him, he thinks that the demon merely possessed him and forced him to commit all these atrocities. So he goes back, but then finds out that it was a ruse. There was never a demon. And this evil mage actually created a couple of troll hybrids to commit all the atrocities. So Geralt eventually has to chase him down. It takes him a little bit longer, but he eventually finds the mage and winds up killing him. Number five, my next pick, and I think this is a little bit more likely is what the movie's actually going to be about, is the story of what happened to Kaer Morin. The castle as it exists today is a ruin of its former self. Only Vesemir lives there most of the time. There are other witchers, but most of them are busy following the path like Geralt, engaged in monster hunting across the continent, so they live pretty nomadic lives. In the present day, their order is slowly dying off because they can't create any new witchers and the old witchers are slowly being killed off through the action of their trade. The whole reason why they can't create new witchers to sustain their order is because the arts and special potions they use for the trial of the grasses, the process of undergoing the witcher mutations, were lost when the castle was sacked by an angry mob. The event is never really covered in the books, so it's a prime candidate for some tie-in material that crosses over with stuff on the TV show, sort of setting you up when you arrive at Kaer Morin during season two. So, oh, that's how it got to be like this. The reason why the angry mob was able to defeat over 60 trained witchers at the height of their power was because the mob also had the aid of a small army of sorcerers and when it comes to range combat and pure magic your average sorcerer is a lot more powerful than your average witcher. Mages like all cloth wearing classes are super squishy though so in close physical combat witchers would tear through them like tissue paper but the castle was sacked and the people at Kaer Morin who knew how to make the special potions and create new witchers were killed and their existing supply of potions. So like you see Geralt creating a lot of potions, that's a big activity during the video games too. He can create low level potions but not the really special ones that they use for the trial of the grasses. Those were meant to be very secret, only a couple people at any given time knew how to create those and they were killed off during that big attack. I get a lot of questions about Ciri and her elder bloodline because a lot of people that play the video games see her being trained to be a witcher and they're like, well, if she becomes a witcher, does that mean that she can't have children and the line will die off? Witchers themselves, as they say during the series, are rendered sterile by the mutations they undergo. So they're incapable of having children the old fashioned way, just like sorcerers and sorceresses like Yennefer tries to find a way to undo that during the episodes. But because the special potions were lost and they can't create new witchers. So number four, that's why you see Geralt in the video games training Ciri at Kaer Morin and later she grows up to kind of be a witcher of sorts but not a true witcher the same way Geralt is. She doesn't undergo the mutations so she still technically could have children. The thing about the books though because the TV show is adapting the books and there's still a ton of book story. They could go four, five, six, seven seasons if they wanted to. I believe at the end of the book story she's still technically in her late 20s. So a lot of the book story leaves off with you just kind of wondering what's going to happen to her in the future. So it's sort of left to speculation. But number three, right now The Witcher Netflix season two is getting ready to film episodes. Henry Cavill is getting back into shape. I think they start shooting sometime in the next month or two. They'll be making the anime movie at the same time as they're making season two episodes, but the anime movie will be released before season two episodes are ready. The Witcher Netflix showrunner did an interview a little while ago explaining why they decided not to release The Witcher season two until 2021 because I think previously a lot of us just assumed that they were going to release it at the end of this year. She said the biggest reason is just to give them extra time to finish the episodes in post-production. Like if you remember Game of Thrones took way longer to produce the final couple of seasons because there was so many extra special effects. So there'll be a lot more news and details about the season two episodes really soon. But because the show is following the books, you don't need to worry that much about what they're going to be covering because they're just going to do the next book in the series, which is Blood of Elves. I did a whole big season two top 10 predictions video about what parts of the book I think they're going to adapt and what the Netflix series is going to change from the books because they already changed a bunch of the book story for season one. So I'll link that video at the end of this. But number two WTF for the most part season two is going to pick up right after this moment here in the Witcher episode eight ending where Geralt meets Ciri in the woods for the first time and she asks him WTF is Yennefer. The whole reason why she knows Yennefer's name, despite never having met her, seen her, or ever heard her name, is because of Ciri's elder blood power and the law of surprise that binds her to Geralt caused her to see him in her dreams. That was what the crazy dream sequence was all about. He was wandering around in the dark earlier screaming Yennefer's name. That psychic connection is mostly because of the elder blood magical power within her. So she doesn't actually know who Yennefer is. She's just asking Geralt, who's that chick you were just screaming about like a madman? 
When season two picks up, they'll probably head for Kara Moran and search for Yennefer on the battlefield at Sodden Hill nearby, since that's on the path to Kara Moran. As far as I know, The Witcher Netflix season two won't release till at least the spring next year, maybe summer. It's going to take them a little over a year to finish the episodes. So the Witcher Netflix anime movie Nightmare of the Wolf is meant to fill that gap. So I'm expecting them to release it at the very end of this year. But let me know in the comments, what story do you think they're going to adapt for Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf? There's a bunch of stuff coming up. I'll also be doing bonus videos for The Witcher Netflix season two. So leave all your requests in the comments too. Everyone click here for my new Witcher Netflix season two top 10 predictions video and click here for my brand new Mandalorian season two video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome.